SpaceX's Starship Flight 5 took place on October 13, 2024, and it marked a major achievement for the company's ambitious space program. The preparation leading up to this historic flight was extensive, with all systems undergoing thorough checks before liftoff. Roughly an hour and 15 minutes before launch, the SpaceX flight director gave the go-ahead for propellant loading. This involved fueling both the Starship Upper Stage, Ship 30, and the Super Heavy Booster, Booster 12. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen were pumped into the tanks, followed by engine chills to prepare the vehicle for ignition. At precisely 8.25 a.m., the countdown reached zero, and the Raptor engines roared to life, propelling the rocket off the ground. Two seconds after ignition, Starship Flight 5 lifted off from Starbase in Texas, climbing into the sky. The early moments of the flight were smooth, with the vehicle passing through the stage of maximum aerodynamic pressure, Max-Q, where the mechanical stress on the rocket was at its highest. Around two and a half minutes into the flight, the Super Heavy booster shut down its engines in a process known as main engine cutoff. Almost immediately afterward, stage separation occurred as the Starship upper stage ignited its engines, a technique called hot staging, where the second stage begins its burn before the first stage fully separates. The Super Heavy booster then performed a boost back burn, a maneuver to reverse its trajectory and return to the launch site. The true excitement of SpaceX's Starship Flight 5 was centered around the unprecedented and bold attempt to catch a returning booster mid-air. Booster 12, after completing its role in the launch, performed a boost-back burn to realign its trajectory toward the launch pad. As it approached the landing site, the tension was palpable. The booster initiated its landing burn, firing 13 center engines to slow its descent. Within mere seconds of touchdown, the robotic arms of the Mechazilla Tower closed around the booster, marking a groundbreaking moment in rocket reusability. This precise catch demonstrated SpaceX's ability to recover boosters without them splashing down in the ocean, thus paving the way for rapid rocket turnaround and reuse. Musk, visibly excited by this success, tweeted, The tower has caught the rocket. Зрение, показывающее, насколько монументальным было это достижение. But behind the scenes, this moment was more than just an engineering success. It was the culmination of years of work and countless simulations. Before Flight 5, SpaceX had never tested this catch system in real-world conditions. The idea of catching a booster mid-air posed incredible risks. One wrong move could have resulted in the booster crashing into the launch tower, causing billions of dollars in damage and potentially setting back the entire Starship program. In the weeks leading up to the launch, Musk himself acknowledged the risks involved. During the first Starship test flight, he remarked that it would be considered a success if the tower wasn't damaged, reflecting just how crucial Mechazilla was to SpaceX's ambitions. The tower itself represents a multi-billion dollar investment, and losing it would have been catastrophic. Given this, many experts and industry insiders were skeptical about whether SpaceX could pull off such a bold move. Catching a rocket mid-air had never been attempted before, and the stakes were incredibly high. Yet, SpaceX's confidence came from their extensive simulations. During the fourth Starship flight, the company ran a detailed computer simulation of a booster catch, which proved successful. This gave the engineers the confidence they needed to attempt the real thing during Flight 5. However, the catch would only be attempted if all systems were deemed healthy. With a fallback plan in place to perform a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, if anything went wrong. Safety was the top priority, not just for the booster, but for the invaluable infrastructure surrounding the launch site. The success of this catch speaks volumes about SpaceX's approach to innovation. While other companies might have opted for more cautious, incremental testing, SpaceX pushed the boundaries of what was possible. This bold move wasn't just about recovering the booster. It was about proving that rapid reusability could become a reality, cutting costs and speeding up the launch cadence for future missions. While the booster was returning, Ship 30 continued its flight. The upper stage flew along its planned suborbital trajectory, aiming for a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean. About eight minutes into the flight, the Starship engines cut off, and the vehicle began its coasting phase.
Nearly 48 minutes later, Starship re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. The upgraded heat shield on this flight performed much better than in previous flights, protecting the vehicle from the intense heat of re-entry. Although there was some minor burn-through on one of the forward flaps, the overall performance was a success. Finally, after over an hour, Ship 30 executed its landing burn and splashed down in the Indian Ocean. While the vehicle wasn't intended to be recovered, the splashdown was an important milestone demonstrating controlled re-entry capabilities. Musk shared his excitement again by posting a beautiful image of the booster hanging from the tower with the caption, Good morning, on Twitter, showing just how monumental this achievement was. After the successful booster catch during Starship Flight 5, the reaction across SpaceX and the wider space industry was electric. Gwyn Shotwell, the president of SpaceX, expressed her amazement, sharing a video of the landing on social media and noting how the success even surprised some of the team members. Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's vice president of Build and Flight Reliability, had previously expressed optimism about the attempt based on the incredible accuracy of the previous water-based landings, stating that the team had confidence in their ability to guide the booster back to the tower with similar precision. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson was quick to praise the achievement as well, recognizing the significance of this milestone for future space missions under NASA's Artemis program. He pointed out that the ongoing testing of Starship and its systems would be instrumental in preparing for bold missions, including landings on the moon's South Pole and future Mars explorations. The success of this booster catch pushes SpaceX closer to realizing a fully reusable rocket system, crucial for reducing costs and increasing the frequency of space missions. Catching the booster was crucial for SpaceX's long-term goals. Unlike Falcon 9's landings, which use legs to touch down on drone ships or pads, catching the Super Heavy directly at the launch site allows for almost immediate turnaround. This reduces the need for refurbishing landing legs or complicated ground support structures, enabling much faster reusability, a key to achieving frequent launches. In this way, SpaceX is inching closer to its vision of making space travel as routine as air travel. Moreover, this launch saw a near-flawless performance from Starship itself. After separating from the booster, Starship conducted a successful re-entry and splashdown in the Indian Ocean, providing critical data for future manned missions. Both stages of the rocket performed exactly as planned, a first in the program's history. For those who didn't see the Starship launch in person, I've got a surprise. You can still experience it with a realistic Starship model, made just for our loyal viewers. Since you've watched this far, we know you're one of them. Head to the link in the description to grab yours now and relive space history. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next video.